I need more right. moving parts. What we're going to be talking about advanced spinner tactics for Lake St. Clair. Not Lake Erie, not Saginaw Bay. And I love this thing. Not Saginaw Bay, not Lake Erie, not Green Bay, Lake St. Clair. These are tactics that we've been using. A few guys on the lake, myself, Jeff, the Prez, Bob, who just won the Classic, Ted, who won a Classic. Um, also, uh, where'd he go? Scott Hunt, they won a Classic last year. These guys have been using these same Classic, these same tactics. You need boards, you need board rods with uh, line counters, and you need spinners. And that spinner right there has been really good for me. It's a bait fish blade from Northland. Your new saying, weeds are our friends. We want to look for weeds, not avoid weeds. The best weeds are going to be these right here. Broad-leafed cabbage vegetation. You're going to see these big clumps. You're going to see these uh, big uh, avenues through them. Breaks in the weeds with room above. Perch. That's the key. Weeds and perch. And you'll see why pretty soon. This is what they're going to look on your sonar. On the left, that's a regular sonar. They're going to look like those clumps, those big yellow clumps with breaks in them. Now on the right is down imaging. You can see those actual stalks on the down imaging. You can see the stalks of the cabbage. You can see the individual stalks. You can see the breaks in the stalks. That's what you're going to be looking for. Now these are the tactics you're going to be looking for. I want you to start you doing this every time out. This is what I've been doing. I want you to find and map the weed beds. Not just go over them and start fishing. You're going to use your sonar and GPS in conjunction. You're going to use them together. You're going to map the entire deep edge of the weed bed. Weed beds start shallow and go out and then peter out towards the deep weed edge. Want you to map the deeper edge. Walleyes hang out on those deep weed edges. The deep weed edges where they peter out into the shallow, into those uh, deeper edges, that's magnets for the walleyes. Map the entire weed edge, beds, find the little cups and points. They're not straight edges when they just don't dive off like a cliff. They're going to have points. They're going to run little cups in, they'll come back out. They're going to have little runs, points, cups. They'll make turns in, come back out. All those little things you're going to map. You're going to be going zigzagging back and forth with your boat, laying down GPS points. Now in a Lorance unit, every time you hit a GPS, you hit your waypoint, a little box pops up on like an HDS unit. Your waypoint comes up. You can change that waypoint. It says you can go down in your drop down box, hit your uh, little drop down box area, highlight it with your highlight area, go down on there, hit enter, and another drop down box comes down with a whole bunch of waypoint uh, images. One of them is weeds. Actually, there's two weeds images, a big weed and a small weed edge. Pick one of them. I, you can pick either one of them. And Lawrence has this. I'm sure Hummingbird has it too. But you can change your waypoint image. You, and I want you to start doing this. And use a weed image, a weed waypoint, to map your weed, weeds. Once you have mapped the weed edges, then you can start using those weed edges and fish over them, because that's where the big walleyes feed. They use those edges as ambush points for the bait fish. And fish where the fish are. Use your sonar. Don't fish where you don't see anything.
That's a big mistake a lot of people use. Now in deep water, a lot of times fish can be way up high or high right on the bottom and you might not see them. In our lake, you're not gonna, you're gonna see fish or you're not gonna see fish. Fish where, they're, where, fish where you're gonna see a lot of bait fish, a lot of activity, that's where you're going to fish. If there's no bait fish in the area, there's no activity, don't fish there, find them. Now this is an actual shot from my GPS and sonar unit. See these weed clumps? That's what you want to see. You want to see those weed clumps, those spots in between, that means you're on an edge. You're not seeing just solid weeds, you're seeing intermittent weeds. You're seeing bait fish above. These are not, these are all bait fish above here. And see that right there? That's a fish. That's a nice sized fish. That's not a weed. That's three feet of, that's about two feet above that weed right there. That's a fish arc. That's a prime spot to fish. Now I don't know if you can see on this because I'm zoomed out. But these are those weed art icons right there. Icon, 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 icon. Those are weed icons right there. I've mapped a weed edge right there. There's some more weed edges right there. Weed icons, weed icons right through there. That's north of the dumping grounds. There's some more over in here, right over here off Stony Point. This is from a few years ago. Let me tell you, I've got a whole bunch more mapped now. Every time you go out, start doing this. Every new area you find, map them. Before you know it, you're going to have more and more areas. Now, fishing tactics. Fish for the most aggressive fish first off in the morning. What I mean by that is, early in the morning, troll quicker than you will any other part of the day. 1-4, 1-5, 1-6, 1-7 miles an hour. Control those spinners quick, cover area, pick off the most aggressive fish in the morning. Pick those fish off fast, you'll cover the most ground, pick off more fish. Then you can slow down and pick less aggressive fish off later in the day as you go back over the same area. Use a GPS to plot every fish you catch from now on. Once you see a board, once you see your Board go back, once you see a rod start going back, hit waypoint. On my G Lorance GPS, you have to hit waypoint twice to hold your icon. There's a reason for it. As soon as my board go back, I hit waypoint. Now I hold that position on my GPS. Once I pulled my fish in, I see it's a walleye, I hit my waypoint the second time, now it's frozen from where I caught it. If it's not a walleye, I hit a race. I don't have that. I've erased that uh, waypoint. I've not saved it. But if I did, it is a walleye. I have saved that. That's why you have. That's why it's. You can hit it twice and it'll be saved, or you hit it once and then you can erase it. But uh, always save every walleye you catch on your waypoint. It tells you a story. It'll tell you a story of where you're catching them on your weight lines, where you're catching them in the lake. It will tell you from year to year, day to day, and also change your icon from day to day. If you're using red today, change it to blue. The next day time you go out, change it to yellow. It will show you where they shift from day to day. At the end of the year, download them onto a chip. You can uh, or ants or, or hummingbird, whatever unit you use, they supply, you can download a waypoint management unit and uh, change them all on your computer, put them back in on your uh, system as a different waypoint uh, icon for, for the whole year and then start all over, yellow, blue, red, every day change your waypoint. Uh, Lance Valentine explains it even better if you want to find out. Go on YouTube, Walleye 101. Uh, there's a real good GPS um, uh, seminar that he does on, on uh, YouTube. Look it up. But you can plan your next trolling pass using your GPS. See patterns of where the pods of fish are. 
That way you can, if you use different colors from day to day, you can see where the pods of fish move. Never fish below fish. This is a big problem most people do. Most of the fish feed are not on the bottom. The last rod I'll ever put out is a bottom bouncer on the lake. All the fish feed up. Fish in, the walleye's eyes are on top of their head. They never feed down. They always feed up. Fish the top half of the water column. If you're fishing in 18 feet of water, you better fi be fishing 9 feet and up. If you're in 12 feet of water, you better be fishing 6 feet and up. I don't care what you are fishing in, fish the top half of the water column. When I was in fishing the tournament trails, and I fished them all, from Michigan Wally Tour, the PWT, the FLW, all of them. This is what I learned. You fish the top half of the water column to catch the most fish and the biggest fish. You the top half of the water column, not the bottom half. Now in a river system, that's totally different. They're on the bottom. But in the lake, you fish the top half. You can't fish high enough. The top five feet, the top two feet, I'm telling you, you can't fish high enough in a lake. Fish higher, you'll catch big, bigger and more fish. Right, Jeff? Yes, sir. Well, you're targeting more aggressive fish that are up off the bottom, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Start fishing from the top down. Stagger your baits from just below the surface, and I mean just below the surface. Stagger your baits to midway in the water column, then refine your target area. If they're fishing, if your baits are targeting in, in an area that are seven feet down, then you can refine your baits and lower them down to that specific area where they're hitting. Then you can refine them. You cannot fish too high, use bottom bouncers last. The fish on the bottom are the least likely to bite. They're resting. They've fed. They've already had their Thanksgiving dinner. They're on the bottom. They're resting. They're on the couch sleeping. Now, if you drag it right in front of their nose, yeah, they might eat it. But on this video, you'll see we were catching a whole bunch of fish on the, on the boards. We caught one on a bottom bouncer all day. One fish. Now, Lake St. Clair, big walleyes eat perch. Big walleyes eat big perch on Lake St. Clair. Scott Hunt will attest to that because on the last classic in his wide well was probably about an eight or nine inch perch that was puked up. And in my live well there were several big perch puked up. All my spinners, these are my top spinners that I run. I run several, but these are probably some of my best. All my spinner harnesses for Lake St. Clair are perch patterns. I use big blades to catch big fish, fives and sixes, and mostly sixes, and they're all deep cup. I use 15 pound test Seeger, a Braze X fluorocarbon to tie my lead, leads on. 15 pound Seeger. Quality hooks, Daiichi or Gamagatsu, red hooks. I started this year using two red hooks. My catch rate has literally jumped up. I used to use one red hook in the front and a black hook and black nickel hook in the back. Started using two red hooks, my catch rate has gone up. Everybody always said use a red hook in the front, a black hook in the back. Now I'm using two red hooks, my catch rate has gone up. They love red hooks. Use metallic beads, faceted beads, holographic beads, or Bass Pro Shop body spacers, which they no longer make, unfortunately. They, uh, they, the shiny beads are great on sunny days. Faceted beads are, I like, are on cloudier days. Don't be afraid to customize your blades. One of the best blades so far this year has been Greasy Chicken Wing. Well, hatchet blades are really good. I couldn't find a Greasy Chicken Wing hatchet blade. So, out come my Sharpies. I took a copper hatchet blade and I customized it with Sharpies. Couldn't catch a fish on a copper hatchet blade. Put Sharpie marks on it to make it look like a, 
uh, greasy chicken wing with black uh, marks on it and an orange uh, edge on it. Bingo. Started catching fish on it like crazy. Always carry a bag of Sharpies on the boat, all kind of colors on it. Don't be afraid to customize it. On Lake Erie one year, I cashed a $4,000 check with it because I put a red mark on one side and a purple mark on the other side of a silver, on a silver deep cup, number six uh, blade. Cashed the check on the RCL tournament with it. It works. And if it works real good and it's a good blade that continually works for you, go buy some uh, paint pens and make them up yourself then. Equipment, same trolling equipment we've been talking about for years. Eight, eight and a half foot trolling rods. Again, Bass Pro Shop, um, in their wisdom, d deleted these. These are uh, they're dead stick rods. Um, they're not their regular trolling rods. These are uh, a little bit looser or a little bit more limber. Um, match trolling rods, eight to eight and a half foot long. High quality reels. I like Daiwa um, line counters. Um, they last longer. Some of my Daiwas I've had for 12, 15 years. They're going to last a lot longer than cheap reels. Um, line, as long as the diameter is around 0 0.013, because that's what all the dive curves are uh, uh, calibrated for. 10 pound test XT is 0.3. 0 0.013. Uh, I use 12 pound test Seren Super Knot. This thing keeps going out. Anyway, um, but check the end of your line every time you go fishing. Make sure it's not abrased. If it is, retie it. Um, I also calibrate all my line counters. To calibrate it, I put a link on our website to, again, Lance Valentine, who's a real good friend of mine. We grew up together on the the tours. Um, he'll show you exactly how to calibrate your line counter reels. Again, don't go to a shop and have them filled up by the shop. They always shortchange you with the line. You have to go and buy a good size, like 3,300 uh, yards of line and put it on yourself and calibrate the lines. I put a link on our website on how to do that with your line counters. Lance Valentine can show you a lot better than I would show you, and then I can describe it. Boards. I use offshore boards, but I put it, but I put a church tackle clip on the front, I, and I put an OR16 offshore clip on the back. The reason I put a church tackle clip on the front because I can use two fingers to get it off real easily. The offshore clips. They hold line real good, but they're hard as hell to get off. These are real easy to get on and off, and they go on the offshore porch real easy too. It's a church tackle. You have to modify it to get it over? No, nope, no modification at all. It goes right on. Just as it goes absolutely right on the boat arm, just easily. But I do use the tattle flags. The reason is because there's perch on Lake St. Clair and perch like the crawler harnesses too. And as soon as the perch comes on, the tattle flag goes dip, dip, and is at half mast. The board doesn't move, but the flag does. You could be dragging a perch on Lake St. Clair for a half hour, and the board would never move. The other reason is for weeds. If you catch in some weeds, this will go down like this and stay there, and you'll be dragging a few weeds. As soon as it does, you got to bring it in, clear the line, and put it back out. And that's what tattle flags are for. Tattle flags are not to tell you that there's a fish on the line. Tattle flags are to tell you that you're dragging a fish, you're dragging weeds. That's what they're there for. They're not to tell you you have a fish on, they're to tell you you have a junk fish on or you have weeds. That's what their purpose is. Weight systems. Inlines are efficient. Lake St. Clair, you don't need anything more really than a half ounce or sometimes an ounce. Um, half ounce is my favorite on Lake St. Clair, anywhere from 20 to 50 feet back. This is the Bass Pro Shop fish weights. I used to love them. Problem is, Lake, Lake St. Clair walleyes love them too and they attack them. 
so do muskets. I have switched to B chain keel sinkers quite a few years ago. So have most of the guys on the tours. The reason is the like I said, the fish attack the fish weights quite a bit. The keel weights, instead of the B chain um, bullet weights, the keel stabilizes better in the water and you don't get as much line twist up your line. I like these much better. Um, they just work much better for me. That's why I like the keel weights better. I don't have the problem with the fish hitting them. The other weighting snap, the other weighting system, snap weights. Now on the opening morning of the Classic, we had three and four footers out there. My weighting system of choice that morning was snap weights. With those, weight, uh, with those waves out there, what I did was I let 30 feet back, then I put a snap weight on, let it down 17 feet, then I put the board on. What happens is on that angle, you got 17 feet down, which probably with only a one ounce weight, you're only about, probably about seven or eight feet down, not even, or even not even that with those waves. That angle it creates with that board going up and down, the snap weight is going up and down in the water column, but it deadens the action on the crawler harness. The crawler harness with an inline weight would be surging too much, and that was three and four foot waves. So on the snap weight, it was just bobbing up and down. The snap weight was moving up and down, but the crawler harness wasn't moving as much. We caught over 30 walleyes that day, and we came in third place, and uh, we did pretty good. But in big waves, I like snap weights because of that reason. When the, now when the uh, weeds get really thick, like in about another month, we get a lot of floating weeds. One of the weighting systems you want to try, I don't have it here, but try a light bottom bouncer, half ounce. Just put a regular bottom bouncer, wire bottom bouncer, L shape. Put that on your line. Use that as an inline sinker. That bottom bouncer will catch a lot of the floating weeds and keep them off of your crawler harness. As it goes down the line, that L shape will catch a lot of your line. Lastly, when it's slow out, I've been experimenting with this for the last couple of years. In 97, I got a lesson from the PW team when they were here, and I've been playing with this. When it's real slow out, break out the lead core. This sounds stupid. It works. When it's dead flat calm out, and then nothing is biting except the flies, one in it, and when I'm out 19 feet of water, one and a half colors of lead core. Yes, lead core comes in colors. One color is 10 feet, or 10 yards, 30 feet. I found that one and a half colors of lead core segmented is perfect for Lake St. Clair. This outfishes any other weighting system. I was out with Jeff one day, and Jeff will attest, um, it was, it was rocking. It was rocking. It was much better than inline weights, snap weights, anything else. And I refined it, and I got it down to one and a half colors. That's the call. And if you're a little bit less water, nothing's biting, you're not getting anything else, this gets it farther away, and that lead core just kind of waves back there. Behind that board, you get it, and you push it way far from the boat. Get it 100, yard, 100 feet away from the boat or so, and that sucker just waves out there. This stuff will put boat, fish in the boat when nothing else will. And I fish it on the same kind of rod, eight and a half foot rod, but you don't put the board on the lead cord. That's why it's segmented. You have to put it on um, its back with uh, a 12 pound test mono behind it. And if you want to find out how you connect it onto the mono, just type in Google, just Google. Best, not to, best way to uh, 
tie lead core to uh, um, monofilament. It's a real simple knot. I'm not going to if I'll explain it to you if you come up here later, but it's a simple knot. It's right here. And it's this stuff will put fish in a boat when nothing else will. How far would your lead on that lead core? I've got a 10 foot from the lead core to my uh, snap swirl at the end is 10 feet. I just got a 10 foot lead off of that. And then you put the, your then you put your uh, regular crawler harness on. Lead core on the back. Yeah, one, one and a half colors of lead core. For, you know, I'm fishing in 19, 20 feet of water in the deeper part. If you're fishing a little shallower, you might only need one color. All right, sliders. This is where I'm going to need Jeff's help a little bit or something. Yeah, the board. Question, are you going to put this on our website? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, people have asked me what sliders are. This is a tournament tactic. These things are basically a last resort when you're fishing the classic or you're fishing a tournament. These things are a pain in the butt to run, but you'll also catch the biggest fish of the day. And it's another way to put fish in a boat, extra fish, and it's a legal way to put extra lines in the water. And I'll have to demonstrate it because it's hard to see, hard to believe, hard to see. We'll just put a short lead on. We don't have to right now. You're being what? Robbed. Rob. Yeah, I got to keep an eye on Scott. <laughs> no. We all have to keep an eye on Scott. <laughs> Nothing to see over here. Keep doing what you're doing. Okay, slider is basically, if I use a fixed slider. I don't use a real sliding slider like uh, they originally came up with. I use a hand line lead, a 40 foot hand line lead. And you can put any kind of weight, yeah, get one on it. Basically, you put your, hand, your board out as you normally would. Now, in Canada, Ontario rigs and Michigan rigs are the same, basically. Four hooks per line or rod. So two, two hook harnesses per rod is okay. Now you put your line out as usual. This is, a, this is an OR release. It has the peg in it. And all this is is a release with a 40 foot meter off of it. And in the boat, you hook that up to your line, make sure that it's behind the peg, and you put this whole thing in the water, and you let it up. And as you can see, basically, you have, as it plays out, it goes out on the line. Now, when you have a fish on, it's pretty easy. Fish tugs and your whole rod, because it's fixed on the line, your whole rod goes boingy, boingy, boingy. It's pretty easy to see when you got a fish on. Your whole rod, when it's in the rod holder, really goes nuts. And when you have a fish on, all you do is you roll it, you reel it up to the tip, and then you hand line in. Just like if you're hand lining in the river. You hand line it in, like if you were ice fishing or if you were hand lining in. 
This one, this weekend I was using a three quarter ounce just to keep it in under the waves and you net the fish. Like I said, this is a pain in the butt to run sometimes, but when you're fishing in a tournament for money, it's a way to get extra lines in the water. And I caught my biggest fish using this. For some reason, the biggest fish love to see sliders. Don't know why, but they do. Every time I run them, my biggest fish come off sliders. But that's what a slider is, and they, they can be very effective. Tournament guys have been using them for a couple decades now, and they really work. Tangles are not too common, but when you got it on the outside board, you got a board and a slider on the inside board, it can get, be fun. Especially when your wife has never been using them before. Okay, here's some locations, guys, if you want to get your notebooks out. Get your pens and papers. Here's some of my prime locations. Uh, these aren't secrets. Guys who see my white ranger out there know where I am. A number one, this is off Stony Point. This is on a diagonal, this is a true area. That's probably my number one area. Number one area for big fish, number one area for numbers. Two weekends ago I took 50 fish off of that spot. Right off of here, a little bit in tighter. The classic was one right around in here. Right off of here, Bell River Home gives off big fish and good numbers too. And a little bit east, uh, west of there, that's usually a good spot for a real good wheat bed in there too. Just north of the dumps, there's a good wheat bed area in there that's really good. And, okay, right there's the Sinclair Light. There's a real good wheat bed on a diagonal right there that's really good. Just north of there, the 27, 28 can area, there's always there's some emergent wheat beds down there that always gives up really good fish starting right around now. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that's one of your spots. Right here, no one fishes but me. And I called Jeff there last year. It's about three, three and a half miles uh, east of the uh, uh, cracker, firecracker. Little spot right there. Uh, did really good during the uh, July, August derby last year. Just east of there is the is a really nice weed bed again. Right off the sandbar drop. Uh, right here, that's called, that's, there's a little hump over here in the weed bed called Don's Hump. Right here is, of course, the 400 Club. That's kind of dead now. That's already gone. That's good early. And this area off the, uh, off the Gross Point Yacht Club, they're here, they're there or they're not. Don't ask me why. There's nothing there to keep them. They're there or they're not. And if they're not there, they're here. They're, they're either there or there. And I, and I probably uh, fish those two spots. And if you notice, most of the spots are on the Canadian side. Everybody asks me, why do I fish the Canadian side? The reason is... The reason is all these creeks and rivers are on the Canadian side dump over on the Canadian side, and it is, okay, what? Lost my signal. The reason is all those creeks and everything dump all the nutrients into that side of the lake. And that's where all the, come on, computer turned off. And that's where all the fish are. I don't know, I just turned off.
will edit this out. <laughs> Power plug got pulled out of the computer. I can't blame it on her. There we go. Sorry about that. But anyway, all those creeks and everything dump the nutrients over here. It's also a lot deeper over here. And the other reason is you don't have all the bass boats buzzing over on the other on the American side. All the PWCs over there, personal watercrafts, and all the marinas over here buzzing over to the islands back and forth. So you got a lot of fishing, you got a lot less pressure over there on the fish, a lot calmer, a lot more nutrients. Fish get bigger, they don't have and a lot more food. That's why I fish over there. Hey, Dan's Dan's uh, hump was wiped out by the way about. <laughs> and these are the results, guys. Most of these fish were caught this year on the lake. Those were caught last year, and those were caught last June. Those were Don, myself, and Bob came in first, second, and third. But those, these were all caught this year. These were all caught this year so far. That's a quality of fish that is on this lake right now. Open it up for discussion. Any, any question? You're writing these uh, four, hook, four hooks per, per line. Four, four hooks per rod in Canada. Treble hook on the screen hooks? Treble hook is one hook. They count hook, hooks, not points. Okay. On your board up here, you've got your spinner baits. Are you using Nightcrawler Hearts exclusively, or are you using other things too? Almost exclusively Nightcrawler harnesses. I've pulled a lot of cranes over there. They track way too many bass, and unfortunately, way too many muskies. I catch enough muskies on crawler harnesses. I've pulled crawler. I pulled my favorite walleye bait over there. Uh, for crankbaits or reef runners. Unfortunately, it attracts muskies from a half a mile when I run a reef runner. I catch nice, nice walleyes on reef runners. Unfortunately, they are magnets for muskies over there. I don't know why mus the musky guys don't run reef runners because they just are magnets. Yeah, really. The rattles fall in the bass and muscle. Yeah, absolutely. But last weekend, Marilyn and I fished the classic, caught 30 walleyes, not a single bass, not a single muskie, two catfish. How fast do you roll? Usually, I try and keep it right around 1, 3, 1, 4, but like I said in the morning, I, I like to kick it up faster. Uh, one five, one six, and then I'll slow it down during the day to try and pick off uh, the less aggressive. Go down to one two. Anybody up? On the range units. On a HDS unit, our Morris Larians, when you push it the first time, a pop-up box comes up and it says save or cancel. So I'll hit save when it's a walleye or I'll hit cancel when it's not. Excellent. Just hit the exit button. Or you can hit just the exit button. Anybody else? Yep. You mentioned uh, calibrating rod. You didn't say why. You got six rods out. This one's different than this one. 
like I said, Lance Valentine can, uh, he'll tell you how why, he'll, he'll tell you how to do it. The reason why is if you're running six boards, um, why, you, why you should calibrate your rods. If you got six boards up, you've got three guys on your boat and you're running six boards out, the reason why you should be having them all calibrated properly so each one of them reads 100 feet out and a true 100 feet out when it's a, when it's a measured 100 feet is because that way you know exactly rod A and rod C are measured exactly. You can put out a 30 feet of line out or 35 feet of line out exactly each one is repeatable perfectly. If not, if you have Joe Blow at the bait shop puts line on your reels for you, they're going to shortchange you. Your line, your spools on your line counters, they don't measure the line out. They measure revolutions. And each reel is calibrated for how many revolutions out with a perfectly full spool. If you're not, a, if the spool is not perfectly full, it will not read out the line out perfectly, properly. So you have to put it on your line properly yourself. You have to measure out 100 feet on your driveway. Don't worry, your, your family's good, your neighbors already know you're a fisherman, so they know you're crazy, so don't worry about what they're gonna think about you, okay? <laughs> measure out 100 feet. You put a mark down on your driveway on the starting point and on your ending point. 100 feet, exactly. Not 25, not 50, use 100. Get a full spool of 3,300 yards because I got six rods. I actually got a lot more than that, but get a big spool of line, good quality line. I don't care if it's trilene, strand, sun line, P line, I don't care what you're using as long as it's a good, lot, good quality line in about 0 .013 thickness. Get a good quality line. Put it on yourself. Fill the spool all the way up. Put it on a starting line. What I do is I put a stake down where I start, have an offshore clip, clip it onto the line where I start with a full spool, have my line counter full, then I walk off 100, 100 feet with my spool. Put the rod tip down with the line taut, not real tight, but taut, and I look at my line counter. Now if your line counter is under 100, you have too much line on your reel because it hasn't gone, the revolutions have not gone enough, that means you have too much line on it. Do you follow me? If you've overfilled your reel, so you have to take line off. If it's under 100, or if it's over 100, you have too little line on, and your reel has gone too many times, and it's counted too, too much line off. If you've gone too, if you have over 100, you have to add line on. On a dialogue, it's about 25 feet for every line, for every foot of line off that you have to add. That's how much that you have to add to get, fill it up. If you're over, you actually probably have 40 feet of line too much on for every foot you're off, believe it or not. So if you have 102 feet of line on your line counter when you say, and when you're measured off 100, you have to add 40 feet of line. If you Line counter says 98, you have to take 80 feet of line off. Believe me, it's a little more complicated. It sounds weird, but it's true. Remember, it's your, your revolutions of the spool is what counts, not the, not the line. So, like I said, go to Walleye 101 or go just right on to YouTube Look up Walleye, look up Lance Valentine's uh, YouTube video, how to calibrate line counter reels. He'll explain it even better than I can. He'll show you exactly how to do it.
better than I can explain it. But it's very important to have your line counter reels calibrated properly, especially when you have six of them, or like I have, I've got a dozen of them. They should all be calibrated properly. Because it's very important when you're putting out line out. In Lake St. Clair, you're putting out 30 to 50 feet of line out usually every time. On Lake Erie, I'm putting out even more line. And it's real important then. Another thing to add to that is if your rods are calibrated and another boat tells you, yeah, I'm 35 feet up, his lines aren't calibrated, you're not getting the same. You're not communicating right. right. If your buddy is. And the same thing is if your buddy. If your buddy doesn't have his, this is a, good, and a whole other situation, but say your most people don't have their um, transducers offset properly. Their transducer is in the water, nobody sets their offset. How, much, how deep of water are you in? Well, that might be, well, I'm in 17 feet of water. Well, how deep is the transom of your boat? Your, your boat might be, Bob's boat, your transom is a lot deeper than mine. You, your 17 feet of water is 20 feet of water, actually, 21 feet of water, because of the because of how deep yours. If you don't set the offset of the transom of your boat for the true depth of water, you don't know what actual water is. You communicate with one buddy doing. That's a whole other seminar on sonar units. Yeah, that's a whole other set. I could go in. A, that's a whole other se seminar on how to set up your sonar unit. Is there another question? Watch your feet, you're in a lot of line. Yeah. All right, and there are no other, yep. I have a question. Do you normally use HES a lot? Do you normally use preset settings that they have, like fishing rods or power? No, 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 no. That's a whole other seminar, but yeah. Everything's custom settings. You have to go in there. You have to go into an HDS. you got to go into any Lorenz unit. Tell it what kind of transducer you're using because right from the factory it's got generic. You have, you have to tell it you're in shallow water. You have to tell it uh, what type of uh, power setting, what kind of color setting, what kind of, uh, all, all kind of different settings. You have to tell it everything. Yes. YouTube is your friend. Go on YouTube. There is all. Lance Valentine will tell you how to set up uh, ranch units. If you have a hummingbird, there are hummingbird videos on how to set up a hummingbird unit. There are. If you have a Garmin unit, they have videos on how to set up a Garmin unit. Lance Valentine has a good video on it. The other guy has a good video on it is Doc Sampson. It's the ultimate fishing got. Uh, Hightechfishing.com. Yep. It's Doc Sampson. Both of our really uh, Is the lake, I know there's not a lot of current, but. Yes, there is a lot of current in the lake. There is a lot of current in the lake. On the American side, all the current is north to south. On the Canadian side, there's mixed currents. On the south shore, it's all from east to west. On the north side, it's east to southwest. North, east to southwest. There are mixed currents in the lake. If you want to control with the current? If you want current, if you troll with the current, that's fine. If you're trolling, I always troll with the wind. If you're trolling with the wind and you're trolling with the current, that's fine. If you're trolling with the wind and against the current, you want to check the speed of your crawler harnesses, uh, especially on the American side, because the current is really pronounced on the American side. Could check your crawler harness speed, because those blades on the American side, if you've got a south wind, those, those blades can be tearing up. You could be going pretty slow, with the wind going south to north, but those blades can be just tearing it up uh, really fast um, because of the currents going south bound. So you got to check the currents, and you might have to really go slow. Um, one thing I want to tell you: one of the best things I've been using recently is my Minkota Tarova. Um, 
You'll see on the video how I use it and how I adjust, uh, how I use the adjustment, make little turns so I can net fish easier. Um, I'm not sponsored by any, but this thing really works really, really good. Uh, the remote control for this. Uh, Don, you want to just go right into the video? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go into the video and we'll uh, get right into that. Turn the lights on. 